welcome everyone to another InventRight.com TV show with Mr. Stephen Key and Damon Kelly. How's that, guys? Is that good? Now, you, you know what's really great, you guys? <laughs> so look at my backdrop. Looking really professional. I got the patents on the back. Andrew's got this nice little background. But the, the, the guy that's really important here, Damon Kelly, he's got an Hawaiian shirt on. What's going on here? <laughs> Aloha! I'm going to Hawaii in two days, so I'm oh, getting nice. out of the rain and the muck and going to the sand and the sea. Nice, nice, nice. Well, that that's sounds terrible. like a lot more fun than our topic for this show, Damon. <laughs> Office oh, no, actions. No. It's the same. It's the same for me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I fell asleep. I fell asleep. I'm sorry. All right. I, I know, you know, Andrew, this stuff that usually puts me to sleep, he loves this stuff. Yeah, Damon, Damon if, if you can make office actions fun for five or eight minutes on this show, you can make anything fun, man. You're okay, like the I life think, of the I party. think I can do that. Okay, wait a minute. I want to start this off. Okay, there's a lot of people out there that did not follow the invent right way. Oh, and my I'm God. I'm sorry that you haven't. I have to say it. Shame on you. But, but you went out there... <laughs> And I did the same thing, you guys. I did the exact same thing. Out of fear, I ran out. I filed a couple patents without doing my homework, right? And the next thing you know, I'm in that process. And I, and I go to a patent attorney and ask him, hey, what is this going to cost? And he gives me this certain number. Let's say, you know, $10,000 or whatever. And I say, okay, I can afford that. And sure enough, I, I file it. I give him all the information he files it. The next thing you know, about a year goes by, two years go by, and I get this I get this note from the USPTO, and every one of my claims, they're rejected. I'm devastated, thinking, what just happened? And I get a call from my patent attorney, and he's pretty relaxed about it. And he says, well, that's an, he's, he calls that an office action. So, Damon, what is that? The office action is the way the United States Patent and Trademark Office communicates with inventors or their uh, representation. And it's... I, I tell everybody the same thing. I, it, the, the thing you can do to prepare for your office action is just take a deep breath because everybody gets rejected and rejection is hard. I know it is. In my entire career, I've had three office actions come back with uh, first office action with some allowed claims. Three in 14 years. So <laughs> that should just tell you how often we get acceptance on the first wait, round. Wait, you just wait. don't. So Damon, you're telling me that almost all the time they just reject all of your claims when you file That's a right. Patent. Everything. Wow. And, it, and oftentimes the search. So what, I, what I'll do with my clients is we'll talk about it. I'll send them the art that was cited against their, their claims. And they'll read it and they'll say, I, I don't even understand what this thing is. What are they talking about? And honestly, sometimes I feel the same way. I think, <laughs> what in heaven's name are you talking about? But what the, what the examiners can do is piece together pieces of art or you know pat other patents out there and say this combination would equal your thing and then it's up to us to say no these are the reasons why it doesn't and that's sort okay. of when we get into the meat of it okay so i freak out i take a deep breath i call my patent attorney he calms me down and next thing i know he's gonna and i, I look at the prior art and I'm, and I'm right i'm going hey this isn't like my idea at all and you go yes it's not but we have to write uh, we have to write, a, um, what's it called? A response to office action or an amendment. Amendment. Yeah, and what is, and that costs money. <laughs> so, and the next thing you know, I get this bill, and you know, it could range from $1,500 to $3,500. I'm thinking, what just happened? So, we, he writes it, my attorney writes it, calms me down, sends it off, and next thing you know, I get another office action. And they're all rejected again. <laughs> <laughs> that is so not uncommon. I'm, I wish I could say that that was uncommon, Stephen, but that is the most common Damon, thing to happen. No, and usually you, don't. you go through Damon, one or two rounds and then you can work something out. Damon, if the it, just, office, it takes a while. If the patent office wasn't arguing with you attorneys, you attorneys wouldn't be making any money off office actions. Let's be honest. Yeah, but I'm um, trying to figure out, are they getting money <laughs> under the table? But how does this work? But, well, the, well so, you know, the, interestingly enough, the, the examiners get points. They work on a point system, and they get points for resolving a case, for responding to a, a, a communication with the applicant. So they do actually get paid based on the work that they do. So, I mean, you could argue that they're incentivized to not resolve the case early, but I wouldn't make that argument. I'm just saying, would, you could. I would. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, so next thing you know, I get I get them rejected again, and I'm 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 ready. I'm in tears now, thinking 
that the USPTO is against me. They don't want me to have this patent. So I call my patent attorney up and he go, hey, let's look at it again. Now, I know because I've got 20 patents and every single one of those were rejected. And That's here's right. my big, yes, and it was brutal because two things happened. Number one, my patent attorney didn't tell me that it was gonna get rejected three times. He told me that it was gonna cost me $10,000 and every office action now cost me a couple thousand dollars. So I'm, this whole patent process has gotten more expensive. He didn't tell me. That, that's one of my beefs. The second beef is, and this is not even beef, what I've learned is have your patent attorney set up a conference call with the patent examiner and try to find out what can we do to get this thing issued. Is that a good strategy? Because that's what I've been using and it seems to work. I, 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 my strategy is call early and often. And so usually on the first office action, maybe I'll call, maybe I won't, depending on what we have. It's, if it's way out in left field, I'll think, okay, we can just respond to this and we can go. But oftentimes the examiner in the text of their argument, in the body of the, of the office action, will give you hints as to what they think is good and what they think is bad. For example, though, they may focus on one aspect uh, too much, unusually so, and so you can take from that, oh, they don't like that aspect, how can we beef that up? How can we narrow that aspect down so that they have a, a feeling of comfort about it? But I love talking to examiners, and now there's a new program with the examiners where it's, you can get an automatic interview. You just sign up, and they set a time, and you're set. It used to be you had to call in and get a hold of them, and then sometimes you got them, sometimes they didn't. You pay phone tag, and it just never worked out. It took forever. But now it's automatic. You can just get an interview right away, okay. and it's automatically granted. It's awesome. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So here's a good question for you, Damon. Now, I've been on these calls with the patent examiner and my attorney. And right away, I don't say a word because some of this stuff is way over my head, right? Mm -hmm. and, and in the first five minutes, I'm thinking, this isn't going well at all. <laughs> and then it starts to kind of turn. And before you know it, in about 20 minutes, the patent examiner is really telling my patent attorney what they might look at. They're, they're giving an opening. So it, you really have to have a, a patent attorney, I think, that has some very good personal skills. I think, right? what, that, I think what people forget is that it's, it's not an adversarial process. It's just another human being on the other side of the line. And what you're doing is horse trading. We're horse trading and we're gonna talk about this and see if we can't come to some resolution. And so if you don't have good personal you know, communication skills, you can't talk to another human being that's a difficult thing. <laughs> now, here's the problem is that most patent attorneys are fairly introverted and they're not good at talking to other human beings. And so they, they get this sort of conflict between needing to be able to communicate and not really having the skills to do it. And that, <laughs> I, I've heard some interesting conversations. There's been some crazy stuff going on in law offices. So, so when I interview, and we'll, we'll have a whole, we'll do a whole, another one of these YouTubes on just how to find the right patent attorney. If you don't pick Damon, you're crazy. But right. <laughs> what do you do to find, I mean, do you ask those questions? Hey, how many times have you spoken to the patent examiner? What is your process? Because I'll tell you, if, if you don't have those good personal skills, you, if your patent attorney doesn't, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot every time. I know you are because I've been on the line. And that, there's, a, there's a battle going on. Now, maybe they're not throwing punches, but man, it's not pretty. Well, you know, there's a there's a whole range of I don't I don't like I, you know I don't I don't really want to get into the sort of battlement kind of metaphor, but there's a whole range of weapons you have at your disposal uh, <laughs> with the patent office, and you can drop subtle hints here and there to what you're willing to do and how willing, far you're willing to go to let them know that you're serious about it. One of the nice things about having an attorney is that they know you're serious, and so they're not going to try to mess with your head and try to tell you to do something you shouldn't, but. You should, I think you should hold all that back in reserve until you actually need it. And my strategy, for example, with, with examiners, the first thing out of my mouth when I say, when I talk to an examiner is, hey, hello, examiner so-and-so, we need to resolve something and I really need your help on this. And I say that okay. every single time. I need your help on this because that puts them in a position of, oh, hey, this guy needs me. And then it just okay. smooths right. a lot of stuff out, which is really mm -hmm. awesome. Okay. This is, All right. this is really, this is really great. I had your thought. 
Andrew thought this was going to be the most boring. It was puppet, not. But as you can tell, I'm pretty excited it about was it. Not. So thank you very much, Damon. Damon, that was great. I want to add a cost-saving tip here, too, in office actions. When you talk to your attorney, like Stephen said, all attorneys are up front. You know, there's a cost to, you know, to write the patent. And then when the op patent office comes back to you one or two or three years later, however long it takes, for these office actions, there are additional costs. Some attorneys will bundle that all together. Some of them will charge later. Make sure to ask your attorney. It's happened to Steve. It's happened to a lot of inventors. Not all attorneys are upfront about that because they don't want to tell you you have even more costs coming. They're like, well, we'll deal with that in a couple of years. And you pretty much have to pay, kick down the money. So a little cost-saving tip there. Damon, thank you so much. We'll remind everybody to take care. Keep inventing. We'll catch up with you on the next InventRight.com TV show. See ya. Bye-bye.